What's up, guys? Quick little trade update for you. So uh, we have a couple of trades open here. Apple, we're closing out for $42 in profit for this put. Um, I'll show you the trade in one second. Let me just close it out. We have a Fed speaker speaking right now. It's 1020. And so that almost creates some volatility in the market. And I'm also going to close out QQQ. And I'll show you that trade as well. So that's another $48. So that's uh, like 90-ish dollars in profit. I have uh, one NVIDIA put still open. It's just kind of getting started. We'll see if it goes my way or if I get stopped out. I'm going to let that one run because that one actually looks like it has some room. And I'll show you the trades really fast. QQQ popped way up here yesterday. It gapped up. This is Tuesday, March 7th. So the 6th of March, uh, Monday, it gapped way up here. Um, and popped up high and then failed and then came back down. Created this kind of like a... You know, I actually forget the name of this candle. There's a, there's a name for this candle. All these candles have wacky nicknames. It was a, it's like a, the, the tombstone candle, or it doesn't really matter. All it, it, It's a topping candle is all that really matters. This looks like a quick little reversal candle. And I suspected it might definitely fill this little gap here and then try to retrace down to this 14-day moving average. So I entered right around here and then took profits just here, just here today. So if you zoom up on the 15, it looks a little more exciting, as you can see. Uh, we entered basically here yesterday, and then it dropped down to here, this big yellow line of support. That big yellow line of support is right here. It's a massive range that we broke out of this past month. So that's also another reason to take profit, but it's also right where the 14 day moving average is. Apple, Apple was sort of similar. Apple, we had a massive gap up here and then a, another topping tail right here. Um, and same deal, I was looking for this gap right here to be filled and then potentially a pullback to the 14 day moving average. So I entered right here, got short and then wrote it down to about here where I just took profits. Uh, I could have waited. It still hasn't totally filled the gap. The gap will be like right here. And then the 14 days down here, I could see it at least filling that gap maybe. And then the 14 day kind of creeps up to meet it. We'll see. Um, but again, Fed speaker right now, the market's very volatile during these times. So I was cool closing that order. If you look at the SPY, SPY did the same thing. It reversed, pulled back nicely, almost touched the 50 and is now finding support on the 14. So this could be a potential bounce zone where it just bounces, not even necessarily goes higher, just chops around for a while. We'll see. It could drop more. I don't know. I don't see a super clean setup here. We're in the same boat we've been in uh, where we're at the bottom of this ascending wedge here, these dotted lines, and we're still uh, back testing this downtrend of 2022 and finding support on the 200 day moving average. We're still basically there. We've pushed above the moving averages, the 50 and the 14, which is good for spy for bulls. Um, if it can hold, then it could bounce up higher, but we'll see. I don't want to hold this through this volatility right now. There's nothing clean cut right here. In my opinion, you could kind of argue there's like a slight, bull flag type deal going on here that it could break out of. Um, but you don't even need to draw that in because you know that if it breaks above this 408 level right here, then you're good to go for bulls. Uh, now, NVIDIA, the one I'm still holding, uh, we'll see. This one might not work out in my favor. It might, it might be too early. We'll find out soon enough. But NVIDIA, first of all, just look at the RSI for NVIDIA. It's, it's, it's super bearish divergence, right? So here was the highest the RSI got, and that was when NVIDIA was only here. And then since then, the video price has gone way up to here, making new highs, new recent highs. And the RSI has gone down, gone lower. Um, that's bearish divergence. That's a sign that it might be needing a reversal soon, even if it's just a little pullback. Um, now let me erase these. Yeah. And so this is what I'm looking at. We have this steep ascending wedge here, just straight up and down like this. I'm looking for it to break. When these break, they usually retrace at least halfway back. I'm looking for a retracal still down to that 190 range that I've talked about. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe this time it only goes to like this two, 200, 210 range. It could only go there. Some little bit of pullback is what I'm looking for. So I entered yesterday here. We had, here's this massive level of resistance, right? Resistance once, twice, uh, kind of three times, four times, and then we broke above it. But then we came back down, ooh, and then resistance again, fifth time so far. That's a bull trap right there. Or at least it's setting up to be a bull trap. We'll have confirmation if this actually dumps. Um, so that's where I entered. As soon as this wick happened and we came back below this level, I entered short here. And uh, we'll see. Now, targets, we throw the moving averages back on again. First target, obviously, is 228, 230 range. But if it tests the 14 again, you know, look how many times it's tested it once. 
big twice, three times. This will be the fourth time testing it. It's likely that it maybe breaks this time. And then the next target would be the 50-day moving average, um, which we could round to this next level of support, which again is 205, 206 range. So this whole 210, 205 range is a really good target, I think, for a potential pullback. If we look at the weekly on NVIDIA as well, uh, we're pretty straight up, as you can see. No real reprieve, no real pullback. Um, Interesting candles here. We don't have a solid reversal candle yet. We just have this wick above here, which might be a pullback. If we look at the RSI on the weekly, though, we are overbought on the RSI on the weekly, which is somewhat rare. We don't see that too, too often. Last time we saw it was at the peak, the very top of NVIDIA. Doesn't guarantee anything, but it's interesting to note. So we'll see. And again, with the moving averages on the weekly, re retracing back to the 14-day moving average on the weekly would bring it right back to the zone where the 50 day moving average was on the daily. So target for the weekly short would be right around here, this 205 range again, just like on the daily. So um, we'll see if that works out. So I, I have it set, my stop loss, stop loss is 242. Uh, so it was the top of this wick basically, 242, right at the top of this wick is our stop. Um, I could move it to the top of today's candle, we'll see. But I wanna give it a little room to chop because sometimes when you see bull traps like this, if they end up being bull traps, you get a little chop and flirtiness going on right at this resistance before it drops. If it drops, we'll see. So um, currently, you know, we're basically flat on it. We're up like nine bucks on the video. Um, keep you posted on that. So Apple, we bought the put, the 145 put for 130, sold it for 171. So that's $41 profit. Um, you can do the math and what percentage that is. That's a decent percentage. And then... QQQ, I bought the 278 put for 141, sold it for 186. That's $45 profit. Again, a pretty good percentage. Um, and that's also a good example. Of like, I don't necessarily go for being in the money. If I can be in the money on a long swing, awesome. But if I'm just scalping, you know, 140 bucks or 130 bucks, that's good size for risk management. Um, it's not going to go that low, but as you can see, it doesn't have to go all the way to the strike. It just needs to go towards it and the value goes up in the option and then you make money. That's our little update. As far as the uh, uh, P&L in this account, guys, this has been my worst trading year to date, um, especially on the small account. We're down to 933. Uh, I did record some of the losses. I just need to edit them to like four different videos. Um, so this account has been demolished. <laughs> uh, it's been my worst trading year to date by far and away since I started trading. Well, I'll just stay tuned. We'll see what we can do with the small account. I always wondered why no one, I could never find good small account challenges online. I'd find a few, but then like people would like add money to them. Like they literally deposit money into the account, into the broker. And I'm like, that doesn't count. That's not a small account challenge. I, I could never really find a good one. Now I, I'm kind of seeing why these are fucking hard, <laughs> very hard. So, um, but, but we'll see. Stay tuned. The, the year is young. I have plenty more time to lose even more money.